Hello everyone, welcome back aboard Submarine Bakuna here at Independence Seaport Museum in Philadelphia. My name is Greg, and on today's episode of SubScience, we'll be discussing sonar. Sonar is an acronym that stands for Sound Navigation Ranging. Sonar uses the theory of sound propagation underwater to communicate, navigate, and detect submerged objects. There are two kinds of sonar, active and passive. Both use sound waves, but applied in different methods in order to operate. Active sonar is probably the one you're most familiar with. It's the ping we all hear in all those war movies. Active sonar consists of a sound transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter sends the ping through the water. When those sound waves strike an object, they're reflected back and the receiver picks them up. You can determine the range to an object by taking how long it takes for the receiver to pick up the echo of your ping and apply that to the known speed of sound through water. Passive sonar, on the other hand, is listening without transmitting. At its most basic, passive sonar is an operator listening to the sounds around the submarine by use of hydrophones mounted along the exterior of the sub. He can identify what he is listening to simply by the sounds that object makes. On modern submarines, computers aid in this identification. Bakuna Sonar Shack was originally located up in the forward torpedo room, but after her guppy modification in 1951, it was repositioned to its current location here below the mess deck. Her sonar suite consists of a BQS-4A ranging set and a BQR-2B listening set. As a submarine, Bakuna is going to rely on her listening set more frequently than her active set, because if you're actively pinging away at a target, that ping gives away your location, and that target knows exactly where you are. As a submarine, we value stealth and surprise, so our listening set is going to be more important than our active set. A sonarman using passive sonar can pick up the location of a ship based on the sounds it makes as it moves through the water. These sounds can range from one-off instances, such as a wrench being dropped or a hatch being slammed, to the continuous sound of propellers turning through the water. The noise propellers make is often called cavitation and occurs when the propeller turns quick enough to leave a void space in its wake. Water rushing in to fill that void space creates a sound, which is then picked up through the hydrophones. A sonarman can tell the size and speed of a ship based on the kind of sound that the propellers are making. For instance, a battleship is going to make a low, slow sound, whereas a smaller, lighter ship like a destroyer is going to make a rapid, high-pitched sound. For this experiment, we are going to focus on identifying objects using only our ears and the sound the objects make. To perform this experiment, you will need a variety of small objects that can be dropped without risk of breaking. We are going to be using a large screw, a pencil sharpener, a ketchup packet, and a pink eraser. You will also need a blindfold to cover your eyes. Remember, sonarmen use only their ears to identify what they're listening to. I have a friend tie the blindfold over your eyes. No cheating now. Then, listen as they drop each item. Dropping the item on a hard surface works best. See if you can identify the item based on the sound it makes as it strikes the surface. Let's practice. Keep watching the video and listen to each sound. Guess which item it is and see how many you can get correct. Here are the answers. Let us know how many you got correct down in the comments. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, let us know by liking and sharing it. Then head down to the comments section and leave us suggestions for topics you'd like to see us cover in future videos. As always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.